Hello and a warm welcome to another installment of Wellness with Will. My name is William Lahong. So good to have you on. Our guest today is Mark Joseph, who runs the Mindful Revolution. He's a mindfulness coach and also coaches you on how to really thrive in your life. And he focuses on mental health, your mental well-being. Our conversation today centers around how you as an activist can help others. Mark, so good to have you on the show. Welcome back. Thank you. Let's talk about what it means in our own communities to be a mental health activist and how does that help the people around us? Mm. Um, it's a brave job yeah. to be a mental health activist uh, and because a lot of people feel very uh, self-conscious, self-aware um, and afraid sure. to, to address mental health issues. I mean, it's really easy for, for you to say, oh, my knee is sore, or my back is sore, or I've mm. got flu. But when you start talking about anxiety and you start talking about depression or substance abuse or a myriad of mental health issues, mm. then people sort of tend to go, oh, gosh, shy away from those kind of things. So to be a mental health activist means, um, I, I, for me, it's, it's really about storytelling. Right. Well, it's about telling your story, you okay. know, and I think everybody that is passionate about mental health activism has a story to tell. Right. Uh, you know, they, it's, it's some, of, some of the most amazing facilitators that I've worked with, advocates and champions of mental health work are those that have suffered with their own struggles or, or have seen close uh, family members or friends suffer as well. And, the, and, and, the, and it really means a lot to them to champion and take this work forward. And Mark, with that, where do you think the apprehension comes from? You and I know the importance of having these conversations about mental well-being. Um, we've had people in our lives who've suffered. Um, we've even lost people uh, as a result of mental illness, right? So I imagine we understand the importance of this conversation, but the people around us, there seems to be some resistance somewhat um, they are a bit apprehensive. Why, why is that? Just from your own um, observation, what have you seen? It's really around stigma. And right. mental health has the worst stigma around it. Yeah. Um, I know during COVID, I mean, a lot of people were like, they had a st there's a stigma around COVID. They, they had COVID, but they didn't want to say they had COVID, right. you know, for fear of being judged or people like stay away from them, whatever. Sure. I think w generally when it comes to health, uh, or, or physical health, there isn't as much stigma. Like if you have cancer or you got MS or you got some some sort of terminal, terminal illness, yes. you will talk about it a lot easier and readier than you would around your mental health. Right. The question is why? Huh. You know, and uh, we're always trying to get to the bottom of that because especially in the workplace, it's seen as a weakness. So if you are anxious, if you are depressed, if you are overwhelmed, if you're suffering from all of these things, you might feel that no one's going to want to collaborate with you, cooperate with you, talk to you, they're afraid of you, they're scared of your reaction perhaps, you, you're, maybe you'll get angry, maybe you'll go crazy. Sure. Um, or maybe, you know, it's just perceived like for the sufferer themselves, they feel as though they're weak and they feel that as though uh, there's something wrong with them and they're not like everybody else. But there's a level of um, an acceptance, mm. really, in society around um, mental health. And it's very sad. And we can see this, you know, people land up in hospital, they get flowers and get well soon cards. Um, but if they land up in hospital for burnout or mental illness, that doesn't really happen. She was... The penny just dropped in my mind right okay. now, Mark, right? Because I'm thinking it could possibly be because there is a fear of the unknown. This is an unseen illness. It's not a physical um, thing that you can say, yes, my, I've got arthritis, my bones are sore, this is where the joints are sore, or, you know, um, you know, as you said, um, someone with cancer, right? So could that fear also be exacerbating um, that 
that pull away from people that we actually want closer to us mm -hmm. so that if we do land up in hospital they bring us flowers yeah yeah it's a, look mental illness and and it, it's a very lonely journey yeah um because as you say people are afraid people are fearful we're afraid we don't know what it is we don't know where it comes from and obviously there's a lot of sort of traditional ideas around mental illness that still are with us to this day that influence um, the way that we behave and the way that we think. Right. Um, and, and, and in the workplace, you know, if you look at it, well, like five out of six people will lie to their line manager when they take a day off work for their mental health. Really? They, five out of six people lie. That's a lot That's of a people. a lot. So why do they lie? You know, they, uh, and, and most of the clients that I work with, they have employee assisted programs within the organization. Sure. Which means, they don't have to pay for counseling. If there is something that they need to sort out or that's very reactive. So I'm feeling down, I'm feeling grief, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm maybe substance abuse problems. Um, surely I can reach out to a counselor within my organization. You know right. what, they don't. They don't. Or they're afraid to because they're afraid that the, the word is gonna leak out, that they are seeing someone and they don't, they don't want people to know that, right? To go for therapy is still like taboo. Right. Now, now, I'm super proud. I mean, I go for therapy. I'm, yay, I'm winning, you know, at yes. life. I mean, uh, I think it's important to go for therapy, but there's still a lot of people, if they if they seem to be going for to it for therapy, yes. then, then they're going to worry what other people are going to think of them and judge them, and it might limit their career opportunities. The progression within the organization. Mm. Or maybe their own family won't trust them as much anymore, you know, or whisper behind their back, like, did you know you have it like this? Right. So, so yeah, I mean, um, and, and I think it's exactly that. It's a mysterious, it's not as evident as um, physical illness or dental illness, you know, yes, yes. Uh, that, 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 that we know more or less how to fix. I still think that in the mental health world, we're struggling to fix the problems at hand. Well, and, and I think that leads into the stigma because um, it's just, I, I, it's really a complicated process. That's interesting that you mentioned the place of work, Mark, because a lot of us spend most of our time in the workspace. Um, you know, we spend most of our days there. So in a week, I think not eight out of 10 uh, of our time, in terms of just percentage you, 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 you'd spend with your colleagues, right? So if you are within this work environment, and you have a mental um, challenge mm. and not coming forth with it because of the stigma, does that not make the problem even bigger? Does that not compound things Absolutely. somewhat? 100%. I always, I always have this like weird idea that, that working in an office with a whole bunch of strangers from different backgrounds and cultures and ages and sexes. Yes. There's some weird alien experiment that they just kind of put us in this thing together and dump enormous amounts of pressure <laughs> on us and see what's going to happen. Uh, because it is. I mean, uh, yeah. we, it's the place where we experience most of the time the most pressure and the most stress. Sure. And we're dealing with people that are not like us and they, they don't understand us perhaps and they don't have the same uh, conditioning as us. So it, it really does make it quite complex in the workplace um, but the workplace is where most of the stress can occur and burnout is a big part of that uh, and that, that is why burnout is a specific work-related condition it's, it's got very little to do with home life right um, and and the the levels of burnout in in the workplace are they say 47 47 percent of people that leave their jobs is because of burnout that's extremely high it's probably the highest statistic of why people leave their jobs because mm. they just can't cope anymore. Uh, they just can't deal with the with the pressure. Right. And that is stress, and that that is also a part of the mental illness spectrum, right? And by the time it gets to burnout, Mark, I imagine there would have been some manifestations physically yeah. on your body that can present themselves well enough for your colleagues or those around you or your community to see that something's wrong. Sure. And by then, is it not too late? Well, this is the thing. I mean, th this is why we encourage people to work on their mental health um, even when they're well. Mm. Um, I, I mean, it's like you go to gym when you're well, 
right. and you get fitter. Yes. You don't go to gym when you got the flu. You know, you, you don't. No. You, you stay at home. Yes. Uh, so we encourage people to work on their mental wellness when they are well. So that, yeah, when, when a crisis happens in their life, that they've got those resilience sort of building blocks that they've established and cultivated. Sure. And, and that's the wonderful thing. And you mentioned, you know, Mindful Revolution. That's the name of our organization. That's the wonderful thing about it is that we are, are in a revolution. We mm. are in a, a new world mm. where, yes, we have therapy. We have, um, we can take the pills and the drugs uh, that can help us. But, mm. but, but, uh, but, but we can brush our teeth and we can, we can look after our mental health just as though we, just the same way we look after our physical health or our dental health. Sure. Um, but, you know, well, this is the frustrating thing for me. It, the, 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 the education, right. the idea of that yes. is still unknown in our world. Hmm. And it's the reason why I'm here with you today, because yeah. this is what I'm advocating for, is because we can do something for our, for our mental health. You know, uh, but most of the time, 99% of the time, we put our hands you know, our, our mental health in the hands of somebody else, a professional. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I like to pick up my toothbrush every day and brush my teeth. I mean, no one's going to brush my teeth for me. Yes. And it would be crazy for me to go to the dentist once every two weeks and I don't brush my teeth. You know? Right. So, yeah, I mean, but people and still, the awareness of this is, is, is so low. And I think that's all I do is I just try and get out there and spread, spread the message that we can do something. I love the analogy of brushing our teeth and having to go to the dentist, right? And obviously the dentist does something very specific, like yes, your dental health, um, you're responsible for it, you brush your teeth every morning, every night, um, but your dentist will then come in with gadgets to really enhance what you've already done. In our own lives, the conversation right now is about advocacy and you've just spoken yeah. about that as well. What can we do? to make sure that um, our mental capacity, our state of mind um, is at a level that we are comfortable enough to use the analogy again, to brush our teeth every morning, every night, but we're also okay to go to a professional every so often when the need arises. So being proactive. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, for me, proactive is everything. Um, the reactive is, is cool, it's great. Yeah. Um, my, my father suffered from mental illness. Um, when I was 20, he died of suicide. Mm. He, he went the reactive route right. and it didn't work for him. Okay. okay. And I'm not saying the reactive route doesn't work. It does work with a lot of people, but right. we, didn't, we didn't know any proactive techniques. I mean, even going to school, did you get taught mindfulness? Did you get taught breath work? Did you mm. get taught how to journal, you'll speak about your emotions, emotional literacy. Sure. Um, and, and you know, the kids these days are learning a lot of these things. I mean, there's an awakening within our education system. The revolution you, sp you spoke of. Yeah, but it's still not there. Yeah. It's still not there. Mm. It's really not there. And um, I, I look forward to the day and, and I, I've seen it in my life. I mean, how mm. things have changed, even in the corporate space, mm. how people, how, how human resources within corporate will, will be like, okay, you know what? We're so tired of trying to get people to look after themselves mm. because they're just not looking after themselves. What can we do? That's the question that I hear all the time. Right. How can we encourage people to look after themselves, sure. to take care of their own uh, mental health? But you know, physical health, it's like everybody wants to look good, right? You mm. want to, you want to look physically appealing yes so everyone's like oh okay this one works out whatever mm. but can we have that same approach to our mental health like wow this person's emotions they're very regulated they're very calm right. they're really together mm. you know how how does that happen how do they do this mm. you know and there's it's my mom and dad no it's what i do every day it's how i it's how i start my day it's what i do in the morning that's going to last for the whole day it's a conscious effort it's a conscious daily. effort yeah yeah and it's also during the day you know uh how are we approaching our jobs how are we approaching stress how are we approaching work mm. and is there something called work-life balance no there isn't there's something called work-life integration yes because work-life balance is out the window we we're just too busy Right. Especially for, for a lot of us that are, you know, working from home. Right. And uh, our, our 
our lounge has become our office. Yeah. So that's very, that's very tough, work-life balance. And the integration part of it, Mark, what does that entail? What, how does that look like in the workplace today? Because a lot, of, a lot has changed since COVID. Yeah. Look, people love the fact that uh, the hybrid model that they can maybe one or two days a week stay at home mm. or maybe maybe more. I know in our business it's almost completely digital now. Sure. Um, and 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 the problem is is that you 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 don't detach from work and life. Okay. So you you might be with your kid and they're doing their homework and you're helping them with you, but at the same time you've got an urgent email to answer. Yeah, and it's like during the day, right? So you've got the freedom of picking them up from school, bringing them home, making them a sandwich, but you've still got a meeting to attend while they're there, and you still got to try and exercise and and, and do a whole bunch of stuff. Mm. And the statistics really show that we are working longer hours um, because of the hybrid model. Um, you know, the pandemic really pushed us into working longer. Right. And it's not necessarily working smarter. So. The whole idea about work-life balance for me is is out the window unless you you know you you clock in at nine and and leave at five you know chick, 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 and then you you totally switch off by the time you right. get home. But but we don't switch off. I mean, um, a lot of the time uh, we're working way after hours. We're working weekends. So how do we integrate life and work within a very fluid and changing dynamic? Yes. Because everybody else is working in that way. We're working in that way. We're enjoying the benefits of working from home, mm. but at the same time, every moment of life is infused with work, and every moment of work is infused with life. Right. So, so the, it's like just trying to work that puzzle out. And I think that's where a lot of people find themselves in this day and age. And it can be stressful too, to figure out how, how it all works. Yeah. I imagine so. Listen, if you have just joined us, uh, you're watching Wellness with Will here on INEX Prime, channel 345. Our guest today is Mark Joseph, and our conversation uh, is centered around how you can be an advocate of mental well-being within your own communities. You may have seen already people in your life that are struggling with the collective anxiety that you and I are feeling as South Africans. Just everything happening around us in real time there's so much uncertainty and all of that stress right that you feel leaving your house going to the, your place of work going to drop your kids off all of that stress combined will then compound whatever stress you then have to contend with when you get to the workplace so we almost need to educate our colleagues if they aren't already about how to uh, be compassionate mark i think is the word would use um how do we do that mark in our environment at home at work um, in society how do we encourage others to not and this is going to be a tough question i imagine because it's almost like asking them to not see this as a stigma and not stigmatize it as it already has been yeah how do we do that well you mentioned the word compassion and there's a wonderful quote uh, by a vietnamese teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. he says compassion is born of understanding and understanding is the result of looking deeply. I love that. So, you know, if, if you think about the Titanic and the iceberg, right? Yes. Um, it, it, the captain said, let's just go straight through it. We can. Mm. But they didn't realize that's on the surface. What's underneath mm. was what really took out the Titanic. It was just massive. Right. So we might see a person and, and say, okay, well, that's the surface person, but we never know what's like underneath that person. There's so much more to that person. And it's uh, what they call, there's a show that Oprah to the me that we can't see, right? Mm. So there's so much more to us that we can't see. Um, I think it's really important, Will, to start to address those underwater, those underlying parts of ourselves that we don't want others to see. Sure. And as an advocate, this is where we need to be brave. Okay. Because I've got to I've got to reach out. I've got to say, well, this is me. Right. This is the real me. Be vulnerable. I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. I, I am having a panic attack. Sure. Uh, can you imagine being in a corporate situation where you're giving a presentation to your clients mm -hmm. and you, you start to have a panic attack and instead of running and hiding, you say, I'm having a panic attack, mm. okay? And everyone goes, yeah, yeah I've done that. Mm. And you know what happens? 
the panic goes away. Right. Because there's compassion. Yeah, but for the sufferer, it's it's hiding the panic that that creates an overwhelming panic. Oh. So this is like it's like taking a soccer ball and trying to you know, push it under water and hoping it's going to stay there. But all it's going to do is just going to bounce straight up again, but faster. Right. So the more you try and suppress something, especially with mental health, the more it's going to come back with friends. Sure. So it's like, I'm not feeling, I'm feeling anxious today. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I've, I'm having panic. I'm, you know, and, and I, I, I do. I, I make it quite known about my mental. Sometimes people get irritated by it. Right. I see it as a strength. And I believe that if I do it, I can encourage other people to be open and honest. And you know, there's a word authentic. Mm, mm. We all want to be authentic. Sure. But what does authentic look like? Right. Authentic means you gotta you gotta be vulnerable. Number one. Yeah. You're gonna find your truth, speak your truth, and even if your voice shakes. Mm. Uh, and that's that's being authentic. Now, as a, as a worker, as a as a family person, to be authentic. Um, is, is surely going to feed into our success. Right. So we're not just talking about, you know, ill mental health. We're talking about performance psychology. How sure. can we be better in our life and in our work and, and to harness the power of being vulnerable, honest, and, 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 and talking about it. We can see a lot of celebrities, a mm. lot of sports people mm. in the last five, six years being authentic and talking about their, their, their mental health more. We have. And what that has done for you and I as the audience, it has empowered us to really understand where they're coming from 100%. and also look within 100%. to see if we, are we not going through similar things? Yeah. We just didn't know what it is. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example. Athlete Simone Biles. I don't right. know if you remember from the Olympics, she was uh, head of Team USA Gymnastics. Yes. yes. Young, young lady, I think she was 21, 22 years old, mm. top athlete, leading the whole field. And she just said to everyone, she said to the world, I'm not, I, I can't compete. Mm. Uh, my mental health's not great. Mm. And um, th that was a staggering, that was astounding, right? Like in the Russian team a few years earlier, if they said that, you know, they were encouraged to lie. Right? Really? They would carry on until they hurt themselves. Now you can imagine you're doing a, a, a twist in the air, but you're not feeling mentally well. You can land in your head. Mm. So Simone Biles looked after herself and she said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not okay. And that's okay. And so you know what that does? That gives young girls all over the world mm. the, the voice and the freedom to say, oh wow, Simone Biles said that she's not okay. Right. I can also say that I'm not okay. You know, well, suicide is the leading cause of death in teenagers right and uh how many lives will summer save lives exactly oh my gosh incredible mark always fascinating chatting to you thank you so much for just um allowing us uh, your time this morning where do we catch you mark how do we reach out to you uh, talk to us very quickly about the mindful revolution yeah Mindful Revolution, oh wow, uh, we've been going for more than a decade now, we've been working in the corporate space. I never thought that I could run mental wellness programs and earn a living, so for me it's been a dream come true. I, I moved out of advertising into Mindful Revolution. Um, and we're, we're a great team, we're a diverse team, we deal with uh, many issues in the workplace, resilience, performance, psychology, addressing uh, stigma, men's mental health, right. uh, dealing with burnout, and so on and so on. We've got, we've got so many programs you know, that we're constantly running for our clients, and even around financial wellness, because that has a major impact on our stress. So um, if you want to reach out to me, ask me a question, uh, or, or, or you know, if you want to find out more about our work, it's mark at mindfulrevolution.io, Indigo Oscar IO. It'd be wonderful to hear from you guys. Great stuff, man. Mark Joseph, our guest today here on Wellness with Will, talking about how you can easily become an advocate or an activist of mental well-being within your community. And when you do that, you will automatically save lives. Thanks for watching.